Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to all the witnesses for being with us today. Um, today, we're considering the intersection of two important policy priorities, addressing the cost of prescription drugs and combating the opioid crisis. As everyone knows, the epidemic of opioid abuse is having a devastating effect on Americans' health and safety, both in my home state of Washington and across the country. With more than 120 deaths occurring from drug overdoses every day, more than half from prescription drugs, it's clearer than ever that Congress must take action to treat addiction and save lives. Addressing this epidemic will require a multi-pronged approach, and one piece of the solution must be ensuring access to addiction treatment medicines and overdose reversal drugs. That's why the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, or CARA, authorized important new funding for the expansion of medication-assisted treatment. But that support could be severely diminished if our constituents cannot afford the cost of these medications, not to mention law enforcement agencies and state, uh, local, and tribal governments. And CARA cannot solve this crisis alone. We're also going to depend on the manufacturers of addiction medicines and the regulatory structure that governs, the, governs them. So as someone who started her career in the life sciences, I know how important it is to strike the right balance between incentivizing medical innovation and ensuring access to affordable medicines. But some companies have rightfully drawn criticism for increasing drug prices to generate profits rather than support the development of life-saving therapies. And I've heard from hundreds of constituents who are outraged by what they've heard on the news. So as we work together to fight the o opioid crisis, it's appropriate to examine the state of this marketplace and ensure that it's working as it was intended. Um, Dr. Ketchum, in negotiations over CARA, Congress failed to provide the President's request for $1.1 billion in emergency funding to immediately fund new addiction treatment efforts. Instead, funding decisions were left to the annual appropriations process, and now we hear there might be $37 million in a continuing resolution. So do, do you believe that emergency funding would have helped Americans with a substance use disorder, help them to seek treatment, complete treatment, or sustain their recovery? Uh, well, absolutely in any way that funding uh, filters down to the patient being able to obtain that medication, uh, as well as in any uh, path that funding uh, proceeds to help uh, keep open and open more addiction treatment centers or other mental health uh, centers uh, where addiction medicine is, is, is so handled. How, would the, how do you believe those funds would best be used um, to help first responders and health care provider, providers fight the opioid epidemic? I mean, you've talked a little bit about keeping um, treatment centers open, but how would, where do you think those funds are most, most critically needed? I do think that's a, a multi-prong approach is necessary. Uh, I am worried that particularly, as I stated earlier, the um, smaller fire departments, uh, EMS agencies, that are starting to really look at the price of naloxone as a significant budget item in their pharmaceuticals, uh, I think this is, needs to be addressed, and this is one area where I think funding should be directed. However, funding can be used to lower the overall price and evaluate the whole competition issue. Um, that would, I think, go a long way as well. But also, again, uh, we certainly need more access by patients you know, to the mental health care so that they can start getting their addiction treatment. Thank you. Um, regarding competition, um, Professor Feldman, um, we talked a little bit about the, comp uh, co the competitive marketplace uh, in this area. Are there other factors we haven't talked about yet today that you think are critical that we should be aware of that are impacting um, pricing? So I think I would put it this way. In a well-functioning market, if someone charges eye-popping prices, a uh, bright young company will come in and compete and the price will come down. So if we're not seeing that and we aren't seeing that, then, then we have to ask what's going on and what's functioning improperly in the market. We have lots of carving out of little territories there, but we don't have the type of robust competition that we would like to see um, in this market. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I yield back. 